Welcome back, Fish and Freaks. We've got a crumb bumbler of a day, and we've got about a two hour window until some bad storms come in. Our goal for today is to take out the crispy, put out some catfish jugs and some lines and see if we can come up with a handful of catfish for dinner tonight. Can we make it happen before the storms roll in? Stay tuned. Whoa, we just sent it a little too hard there. Shut the motor down. Short window, but I think we can get some catfish and I've got bait. I've kept bait frozen gizzard shad for months now that are just fantastic, oily, greasy, ah, delicious catfish bait. And uh, of course we got our trusty jugs that I've made up. If you guys don't know how to uh, make jugs, unfamiliar with them. I'll show you how to make them. Video's linked here. It's cheap, they're effective. I like my jugs, they tend to work. Also today's video brought to you by our latest drop at Guggen Squad. We've got the brand new pinner worm, we've got brand new swim heads, we've got the, the, the dub grub, we've got brand new fish batter. All right, let's get started. Greasy gizzards. Ooh, look at all. Oh no! Oh god, all the bait's gone. Oh my gosh, no. What is happening? Why? Why did this happen? What happened? Oh, he just chummed the waters severely. Oh, good news is we got tons of bait. Bad news is uh, we might be feeding these catfish for free right here. Oh my gosh. Googan moments. So I'm just gonna chop these in little chunks. I never like to use huge pieces. I don't like the tails. Heads are good, I don't like the tails. I think the key to doing this is putting your bait in a, in a spot where that hook point is exposed and it's gonna get the fish. I don't like to just stick that thing far in there because you're, you know, you're afraid that catfish is gonna take your bait. You wanna make sure your hook is clear. Let's see if that's gonna reach the bottom. You can see, still see all like the bark and stuff. That's literally perfect. Perfect depth right there. So go ahead and set our head on here. Get this, look at that big boy. Big boy. Get something big on that one. I'm using four and five aught hooks. Let's see how that goes. 20 foot jugs. All right, so we got two here. I'll probably idle to another spot. And we'll take a look at putting a jug somewhere else. Well, we almost lost all our bait in the first five minutes. But they're nice and chubbed up over there. Let's try another spot. Fish do be down there. So I'm on a big point. Oh, I'm gonna try a few different depths with, with jugs. I'm gonna try up on the shallowest part about 17, 18 foot. Then we'll take it out and take it out again. All right, let's get out another gizzy, man. These things go a long ways, just one of them. One of these big ones. I'll show you guys something that I do really like. These floats right here, though, they will pick your bait up off the bottom. It's kind of a nice little addition. All right, we got one set up on top of the point, about 17. Now we're just gonna come out here to about 20. Drop another one. All right, 19 foot, looks pretty good. We'll send it away. Okay, now we're gonna try a couple of cove floaters. These are shallow ones. These only go down about eight to 10 foot and they're just gonna be floating. And for these, I'm using a lighter weight. So this is, a, this is a two and a half right here. I'm not using the full three. You could go even lighter actually than that if you wanted to. There we go. All right, she is set. That's in 15 foot. It's just gonna drift through here with the wind basically.
There it goes. We're gonna run around to our first ones, check those, and then come back. Some people may think the jug fishing is really slow. You know, you set them out overnight. I never do that. And the way I like to do it is sort of fast. Fast and furious, it can be fast and furious action. To where I like to set out some spots that are what I think high opportunity spots. Put a group there, go set another group, and by the time you're done setting that second group, it's time to go check the first one, and then you can just keep flopping back and forth. And if you have one really good spot, you can just sit there and like watch a jug go down while you're baiting one, throw it out, and just keep going and going and going. It's really a, it can be a fast, really fast way to fish. That's what I'm hoping for today. In these two hours that we got, it's taken us about 45 minutes to set these out. Hopefully we've already got one on, on our first spot, and then we can just come back and keep the, keep the catch and go with. Oh, I think we got one. I was just driving by our second spot, and it looked like uh, the, the jug turned slightly. So it, doesn't, it didn't bop under, it just looked like it turned, so I think we do have one on here. Oh yeah, I feel it. I feel it already. Feels like a good one too. Oh yeah. Great catfish right there, guys. Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha. That's not even at our first spot. It's just on a stop-off point. This is the shallower one. Woo! That is gonna be a good dinner right there. I mean, just a couple of those. <laughs> and you're set. That's fantastic. These jugs that I have, have built, they're adjustable for the depth and I like to get them pretty close. Pretty close to the, to the exact depth and maybe just a hair shallower than the depth. So when they touch the bottom and they don't drift, you have a little bit of wind, you can find them easier. But also, you can tell when the fish has got it. So if you make it where it's too deep, you're not gonna be able to tell. And there goes the jug right there. So you guys see the, the weight, the hooks. So it's, it's perfectly placed. But when you set it just right and a fish gets it, it's gonna go under. If, it's, if you got too much slack line, you're not gonna be able to tell if, if one's on there. Plus, it gives them room, slack to twist up the line, which is bad. You don't want that. Can't tell if I see movement or not. The uh, jug's kind of bobbing up and down, but it could be just the waves. We're gonna take this one in. I'm gonna move it to our other spot since we've got confirmed fish over there. We'll toss them where we got our, our, uh, our other catfish right here. We'll have all our lines in that area. Guys, the wind is picking up. We probably got 45 minutes to an hour. I don't know if you can see behind me, it's looking pretty nasty. Till it's it's not crispy certified. Can't be out here in this little boat. I also don't have a bilge pump, so if it starts raining, there's that. We, we'd be scooping. All right, this one is interesting. Looks like a, a 15 footer here. I don't really like it. Not in love with it. Oh, I'm starting to feel that rain, folks. This one just says six foot. That one's really gonna be shallow. I think we're gonna have to put some rain gear on. The rain is coming in. Come on, fish. Coming to check our pocket drifties. I see one has drifted way far. Way, way far. I'm looking for the other one, but I don't see it. This is gonna be a mess right here. Oh my gosh, these clouds are getting so dark. Oh 
my gosh, we got one. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Holy cow. Oh gosh, in the shallows. Woo, baby. I thought we were just, dr we were hung. We were drifting hung. Woo, that's bigger. That's bigger than the last one. It's just that time of year you get some little shallower than normal. Wow, big ones up in the shallows, man. Might be another one on here. This other jug got away from me. All right, that one did not have one. I'm gonna reset it though. That was obviously a good spot. All right, we gotta go hide. It's not looking good, guys. Not looking good at all. Y'all, this is bad. This is a bad situation. Uh, this, this rain, it was kind of drizzling. I was thinking, oh yeah, I got two hours because the rain's gonna be coming in. Uh, bad storm, heavy winds, y'all. I'm probably gonna lose my jugs. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get back. I can't, I definitely can't get back right now on this stuff. I mean, let me just step out here on this dock. Oh, spider web, bad spider web. So I had to come in here in this, this dock area because look out here. Look what's going down. That is not good, y'all. That is not good. Very dark, ominous clouds. They just engulf the area. I'm looking at one of my jugs right now. It's getting, it's like being taken out to the main lake. My floating jugs I put out on the main lake uh, flat, they're gonna be gone. They're just gonna be, see you later. Uh, hopefully the ones that have weights on them, they, they stay. Uh, but I can't get across the lake right now in these winds, y'all. My boat will get destroyed. I'll sink the boat. I don't have a bilge pump. We do not have a bilge pump in here, so we're gonna have to just kind of ride it out. The good news is we got two awesome catfish. Really good sized catfish on the line right here. Look at these bad boys. That is the good news right there. Those are two very nice blue catfish, perfect eater size. So we're gonna let them chill out down there. And hopefully we get some storm relief. I'm gonna check the weather on my phone and just see if we can get a window. producing heavy rain across the warned area between two and additional rainfall amounts of a half an inch to an inch and a half are possible flash flooding is already occurring guys just look at how much my boat is rocking inside of this protected cove this is bad news bears so i just looked at the weather and it looks like it's going to get worse <laughs> And it's not gonna stop for like another four or five hours. Like the wind is supposed to get worse. So now I'm trying to think, do I just strap the life jacket on and uh, try to get back to the other side? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that the, the front of the storm is just a big burst of air right now. And it'll be, it'll calm down a little bit, be just kind of sustained. But right now it's gusting up to 30, 40 miles an hour. It's, Stupid. I, I don't even know how I'm gonna get my gear back. This is way worse than what I thought it was gonna be. So we just have to put our cowboy hat on and get out here in this rodeo, but I don't I do not see that going well. Alright guys, I'm going to uh, exit this dock and just see just see how bad it really is. I'm uh I'm concerned about the waves, but I'm even more concerned with, uh, I mean, I'm concerned with water coming in the boat and then that capsizing. That's what I'm really worried about. I've put my life jacket on. So 
I'm actually a little fearful here. Not gonna lie. We're gonna go, we're gonna try to just recover some gear in this cove briefly and see if we can kind of survive. Oh, man. This is very difficult already. Here we go, baby. I see a jug that's drifting on the shore. I'm just gonna try to go get it. See what happens. Woo! Woo! Oh lordy. Oh lordy, we're gonna get wet. Jug. There's a jug. Uh, uh. Alright. Here's one. Screw the fishing at this point. Fishing's over. We're trying to survive. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, holy. All right, jug number two. Covered. Not taking any over the nose, which is good. I got a lot of weight in the butt of the boat and it's keeping the nose of the boat up. We are, uh, we are definitely in like top five worst moments on the water for me. Like <laughs> dangerous. I don't wear my life jacket nearly enough as I should. I'm putting this sucker on. I mean, I'm just trying to get out of this cove right now and there's three foot waves. Uh, I'm at like a really bad spot on the lake where the, the the waves have had a lot of time to build up, so it's really not going to get any any worse in like the next quarter mile. The problem is this next quarter mile is where all the chugs are. Oh. Golly, I've gone like a hundred yards in five minutes. Taking on quite a bit of water. Just taking, taking little bits of water over the bow, over the sides, the wind. I see, I did see one of my jugs. I feel like I can make it across the lake. If I just go slow, it, it, the worst part is going into the waves right here. Doing it, boys. We're doing it. I think we got one on. Cat. It'll eat. That's amazing. Woo! Y'all smash the like button for my survival right now. Magnum waves. Magnum waves. What are we doing? get us.
got two back. We got two more back. I think my equipment's gone. I just lost half my equipment. Not worth losing my life over. I gotta get out of here. Oh! We almost flipped. Almost flipped. Oh! Catfish, we made it. I'm glad we made it, guys. That was that was scary. That was actually scary. We got our catfish and we got our lives. The crispy collector. She came through. There was so much water in here, I wasn't able to really get up. Ah, oh, golly. That is a lot of water when you're talking about a tin can. Look at that. Look at it all draining out. Gas tanks underwater, batteries. The battery was like a quarter of the way under the water. Woo! We lost half our jugs, but you know what? They're like a dollar a piece to make. The hooks are the most expensive thing, quite honestly. So we did all right. Life jacket came in handy. There were a few moments where I thought if this wave comes into this boat, I am screwed. So let's get these in the cooler. Let's head back to the treehouse where it's safe. The oak trees out here looking like they're gonna snap, y'all. I'm so glad that we decided to make the move and go across the lake when we did because it has gotten worse. And um, I would have been stuck over there. So now that we have uh, risked our, our boat, risked our, our life to get these catfish, it's, gonna, it's time to clean them and cook them. So I'm trying something brand new on these catfish. And when I got home, I had them out on the stringer, I hung them in a tree, sliced the tails, I'm draining them. I wanna see if that makes the meat taste any cleaner. I don't really have a problem with not doing that. I eat catfish all the time. Some people say they're gamey, I don't, I don't really ever get that. But I wanna try this because I've heard it makes the meat taste sweeter. So we're gonna take it to the fillet board and see if the, if the meat looks cleaner, if it looks whiter or clearer. Uh, less bloody basically and we're gonna be taking these to our lakeside camp y'all for camping out tomorrow and we're gonna be putting that golden crispy on them and it's gonna be that much better because we we risked a lot to get these catfish out here today you know some of these I can't really tell a difference guys I mean still I still see it right there which is that they say that's what gives it the gamey taste now, as far as like cleaning them, it was it was a cleaner experience. I'm going to um, vacuum seal these. These will be ready for camp, and we will take them to the skillet here in just a little bit. Alrighty, y'all, it is time to cook these cats that I pretty much risked my life for. I've got a, a person that likes to eat fish, I think. That is Rob. How many catfish have you eaten in your lifetime, do you think? Uh, a lot, actually. A lot, you big catfish yeah, so, guy. Well, yeah, so when I, this, this, this is kind of a good one. When I came back from Iraq, the first place I went to was on Lake Fork. Catfish and it was hunt? The catfish, yeah, you know oh, the catfish one, Yeah, one of those catfish houses. Yeah, the, I've been there, yeah. Yeah, the catfish, so I ate so much catfish that I was driving back to my grandma's from there, 
and I threw it all up on the side of the room because I hadn't eaten fried food in like six months. You were just I just like, gorged it, myself. I had like the peach cobbler. I had oh, beer. I had yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. I was like all over, just throwing up everywhere. You, now, you got to splurge on a good catfish hut every once in a while. But what they give you in the catfish huts? Actually, got a lot of rear end there. What you're getting in the catfish. Uh, huts is is most likely channel catfish that has been harvested out of a pond in Mississippi. Now, I didn't just make that state up. They are the the world's <laughs> largest producer of catfish. The state of Mississippi, biggest catfish ponds. That's where most of your catfish comes from. That you get in a store and a lot of these places. I don't know if I've had a blue cat. To be truthful, I don't know. I can tell you from cleaning catfish channels versus blues. The blues, the channels smell sometimes. And they eat a lot of, you get a lot of catfish, uh, channel cats that eat like stink bait and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Blue cats, they'll eat more of like shad. They're kind of cleaner eater, I think. Not really flaky. It's like, Is it better than it's not like a pork chop chewy. It's not chewy. It's just like, <laughs> how do I describe it? A, a good catfish. It's not pork chop chewy. It's not really flaky. It's, got a... it's it's more like a, like a saltwater fish. If you order saltwater fish, and it's like like redfish. It, yeah, like redfish. Not as flaky as redfish. It's got more fat in it. Not a sponsor, but uh, Seth M Seth McGinn's game maker. This thing is just the best for fish. I I put my fillets in it when I'm cleaning them. I I use it to coat my fish. It's awesome. By the way, guys, this stuff is now back in stock. This is our fish fry right here. It's it's awesome. It's got a nice zestiness to it. And I like the original. Original is good. We have a spicy as well if you want to kick it up. Because we're gonna take our lid here. Look at this. It even like collapses down, so it's it's good for camping. Take our fry and we'll just probably put about a quarter or half a bag into our little deal here. We're gonna get our pan nice and hot. So we'll put that in our pan already nice and hot now if it's if it's smoking like this that means the pores are opening up and it's gonna accept the oil and what happens there is it's gonna create a a non-stick effect when you shallow pan fry you don't want to flip your fish too early because when you flip it too early it's gonna stick the the fry or the batter to the pan and then you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna lose a lot of your flavor and your taste we don't want that when you throw your catfish in here, guys, throw it in, swirl technique. Let's get in that top coat, a little pat, just a love tap or two. Flip it over, get it again. Comes out and it's just ready to go. Butter adds a nice buttery flavor, if you can imagine that. How many days a week do you guys eat fish? Dude, a lot, I probably have mercury, like, all up in my system. <laughs> Alright, it's been a few minutes guys. I just gotta get you in close here. To just show you the golden color. What you wanna look for? I'll try to flip this guy gingerly. Heavy. There we go. Look at that. Ooh. Goodness, Rob. You're in for a treat, my guy. One of these is ready. That one's ready. Oh my goodness, look at that. All right, guys, I am excited to see Rob's reaction to this blue catfish. Remember the ones that came out first? Yeah, on the bottom. Yeah, but that place got some weight, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Those are some heavy cats. So let's, let's, that, that one's fresh. That yeah, one just came out. Yeah, I, I, I could tell it was a little fresh. Yeah, that one's going to be hot, hot. Yep. You about it? That's good. Look how it just flakes. It's got, it, like, you almost need a fork, you know, to get in there with it. Dude. That rushes. Oh yeah. Don't sleep on the catfish, y'all. If y'all have never caught a blue cat, 
if you catch it, if you catch a blue cat on a spinner bait this time of year when you're bass fishing, don't throw it back. Dude, that is so good. Put it in the boat. That's like, I think blue cat over crappie. That's what I'm saying. I think blue cat over crappie. Are you having flashbacks to the catfish shack? I think <laughs> this is better, right? So the thinner ones, the small ones, going to be channel. Still going to be good. It's just not as. It's not as meaty. Okay. Big difference. Big difference. Mega difference. Okay. This is the one you just had. This is the channel. Um, wow. That's like night and day difference. Yeah, this one's good. Wow. But it doesn't have that. No, that's like not even close. But meaty. Uh, no. It's hard to describe, right? Yeah. No, that that's like that's it's, that's it's it. It's like fatty in a good way. <laughs> All right, guys. I am. I'm stoked Man. that Rob has enjoyed my catfish. This that's is so good. awesome. This is why your wife stays with you right here, just because of the fish. Hey, I bring these fish home, baby. Oof. All good ladies love the fish. <laughs> and I, da I dadgum flip my boat for these fish. You guys <laughs> got to smash that like button. Stay tuned, me and Robert are doing some bass fishing out here, doing a little, you know, we out there poking on them a little bit. So subscribe to the channel, and thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, <laughs>